Hello everybody and welcome back. I wanted to share with you another acquisition. This is an unusual animal from my point of view. I'd never seen anything like it. And my first glance I didn't think it was a Stanley plane. But as you can see there emblazoned on the front of the lever cap it's the word Stanley right here. So there's the first clue. This is the number 18 block plane whose main distinguishing feature, the number 18 and the number 19, is that they have what's called a knuckle joint lever cap. And this is of the first style of knuckle joint lever cap that they had on this line of planes. So the number 18 ran from 1888 to 1950, and this early style lever cap ran from the beginning up to 1913. Well, there's a lot to talk about with this little gem, so I think I'm going to break this up into at least three videos. This one here is going to focus on this guy as I found him, and I'll provide a little bit of historical context for those of you that are interested in stuff like that. And in subsequent videos, I'll do one on the spruce up, tune up, clean up of this guy to turn him back into top-notch working performance. And then I'm going to do a separate video on the challenges and fun I had plating the lever cap. So you're definitely going to want to check those out. And if you go to my channel, I organize my videos by playlists. So if you're looking for something specific, you shouldn't have a tough time finding it. So without further ado, let's get into it. And the number 18 is virtually identical to the number 9.5 here, with the exception of the lever cap. The number 9.5 has this sliding cam style lever cap, and the number 18 this pops up and out and as you look at that they look awfully similar now take the irons off and they're virtually identical so the nine and a half this is sort of Stanley's bellwether all-purpose high-quality plane and this one in my collection works great and the 18 is all of that with the nifty convenient knuckle lever cap. This particular one, as you look at it, it's a pretty simple mechanism. There's a little bit of a cam action on these pieces here, and it's essentially just two pieces with pins holding it together. The second generation, uh, better one, if you will, uh, it's four pieces. It's a more complicated knuckle joint mechanism. One of the things that people complained about with this one is when you snap it together you kind of have to push this down and forward. So it's generally thought that these older versions aren't as desirable as the newer ones. That's according to uh, Patrick Leach in his website. Well let's try to get an idea what these things were worth back in the day. I've been on this page before and shown it to you guys and here's the link. And once again, I don't know who created this page, but my deepest, most sincere thanks go out to him for such a tremendous resource. And if we go down here to this particular catalog, this is 1907, which kind of puts us in the time period of interest. And if we open it up, let it load, we have to go down through the things we're not too concerned about, particularly the Stanley rules and levels. <laughs> from the Stanley Rule and Level Company. And there's the rulers. We're finally into the levels. And finally right here at page 38 we're at the bedrock planes. So just for reference let's make a mental note. The 604 in this time frame is $2.75 right here. And let's keep going. Now here are the Baileys, the iron adjustable planes, the Baileys, the Bailey number four is two dollars and forty cents right here. So to upgrade from a Bailey to a bedrock number four plane, it's thirty-five cents on two dollars and forty cents, which is about fifteen percent. So let's just keep that in the back of our minds as we get to the block planes. We have to get past the transitionals. Here's a section on plane parts is kind of interesting. And these are the cutters, circular planes, specialty planes. Oh, here we are. So here's the Stanley 9.5 block plane, which is Stanley's standard premier adjustable mouth, lateral adjust, depth adjust. This is their workhorse block plane right here. And if we go down, the price of the 9.5 is $1.10 in this time frame right here. 
So let's make a note of that. And here's the number 18. The big difference between the 18 and the 9.5 is essentially this fancy schmancy knuckle joint mechanism for the lever cap. And here's the price. It's $1.30. So to upgrade from a 9.5 to an 18 to get the nickel trimmings in the knuckle joint lever cap, it's 20 cents on a $1.10 for a 9.5, which turns out to be about 18%. So it's a slightly bigger upgrade to go from from a 9.5 to an 18 block plane, at least percentage-wise, than it is to go from a Stanley Bailey number 4 to a, a Bedrock 604. So again, just to put this in a little bit of perspective, hope that helps. Another thing that Patrick Leach warns is that some people take the body of a 9.5 and they'll put the lever cap of an 18 on it, and he says that uh, the screw that holds the two lever caps in place are different lengths. And let's just see if we can, by chance, test that theory out. Hopefully I won't get these two screws confused. And that's absolutely true. So here you can see the screw that holds the lever cap in for the 18 is indeed significantly longer than that for the 9.5, at least in these two examples. This is the original screw to the number 18. I spent some time uh, peening it, sanding it, and polishing it and it looks okay, but by coincidence I discovered that the standard screw out of a Bailey plane seems to be the same screw. And I do have an extra one of these, so I am tempted to see if I can find one that I can replace this kind of chowdered up one to the number 18 with. I think the problem is the lever action of the knuckle joint kind of beats up the underside of the screw. So if we start to take this apart, you can see here is the lever cap. It's a simple two-piece design with a couple pins holding it at the pivot point. There's a letter B cast into the underside of the spoon section here. And of course it says Stanley across here. Other ones have a patent date down here. This particular type does not. And you can see the plating on it is completely gone in the upper section and pretty flaky on the secondary piece. The iron, I don't know how well it's going to show, but this is the J logo. It says Stanley Rule in an arch, kind of like a rainbow, and then and level company along the bottom. The iron otherwise looks in good shape. I don't see any pitting. It looks to be all surface rust on either side, and it looks as though somebody took the time to flatten the back. A rare but welcome sight. And there's that screw. Looks a little chowdered up on the top, but otherwise in decent enough shape. Don't know how well this is showing up, but there's three patent dates on the lateral adjuster. 11788, 72488, and 8397. And this is steel with the rotating disc up there. A few shavings. I don't know how old they are. I suspect old. This knob looks in good shape. The eccentric lever also looks in good shape. And it looks like there might be some lettering on it. I can't quite tell. And the throat doesn't seem as though that wants to come out. And the adjustment wheel is a left hand thread. And it looks like brass once was nickel plated and this lever looks okay a little surface rust on it and the japanning the black paint on the body here looks pretty gosh darn good and the sides and sole occasional scratch here and there but also in good shape and there's a letter A stamped into the right hand cheek I don't see any evidence that this piece ever had a nickel plating on it. The depth adjustment wheel looks like on the bottom, nickel plating on the top, not much remaining. This screw, hard to tell if anything, was nickel plated. And the lateral adjust, you can read the patent dates, you can't really read the word Stanley on it. This end is pretty corroded. And for the eccentric lever here, Looks like there might be a patent date on this lower edge. I can't really read it. 
Well, I'm going to refer to John Walter's book once again. I've got to tell you, I love this book, but he actually does a type study for the number 18. And after reading down through all the various types and the changes, I believe I have a type 8, which was from 1905 to 1906. And just for the record, the big change from type 7 to type 8 was Stanley was only on the lower end of the lever cap, and the patent date was deleted for the type 8s. And when you get into type 9, the uh, lateral lever only has one patent date. So mine clearly has three. So we're before a type 9, and I think, best guess, type 8, which is kind of cool. And it all seems to line up. The trademark on the iron seems to be of this era, and the fact that it has a B stamping on it seems to put it in this era. Back a few pages, he has a table that outlines some of the markings that might be on the various parts of the plane. And ironically, the Type 8 says there isn't a B on the lever cap, but there is, for, there is ironically, for a Type 7 and a Type 9. So I think I happen to have a Type 8 that has the B on it. But anyway, how cool is that? And Stanley moved on to the more complicated, albeit better, lever cap about six years after this guy was made. Well, that's what I got for this video. It's getting a little long. Hope you got something out of it. I certainly enjoyed making it. Got other videos on this guy. One of them is how I spruced up, cleaned up, and tuned it to turn it back into a top performer. And then I have another video on the fun I had plating the lever cap to make this thing look almost as good as it did when it left the factory floor. So you definitely want to check those guys out. Well, that's all I got for this guy. Had a lot of fun doing it. Hope you guys got something out of it. Please like, subscribe if you will, leave a comment, you know I love to read them, and take care, be safe, and check me out on the next one.